Hello my friends and welcome, we have the satellite image from the Pskov airfield. Finally the weather was good to show everything. We have two of the destroyed Illusion 76 aircraft, I mean totally burned out, plus two more that are damaged. Before it was the real camera and now it's the optical image and there you can see two of the Illusion 76. Before we saw that two more were significantly damaged and will not fly again. So totally from what I see there are four of those airplanes totally kaput. The airplanes belong to 334th Military Transport Aviation Regiment that was used to transport the Russian paratroopers. The paratroopers from Pskov actually took place in a war in Ukraine then it has just been started near to Kiev. Bucha. Later on they also participated in the Russian army attempts to invade Ukrainian territory near to Bakhmut and in other places, but were never used fully, because it is the main Russian strategic high mobility reserve. Now it is not that mobile from what we can see. Also I was really surprised to see more airplanes on this airfield from what I understood as it was reported before Russia evacuated most of their Illusion 76 from this airfield, but now I can see that mostly they put those on the taxiways. Interesting. And one more satellite image of the confirmed destroyed Russian airplanes. Wow. According to the latest reports, one more attack started on that airfield and let me show you this video. This is how the Russian air defense is working to shut down drones. The similar picture I saw myself with my family then I stayed in Boryspol and Russia launched the drone attack on our city. The air base is just around 100 meters away from the place where I live so we saw that stuff with our own eyes and it was really scary. I tried to film the Shahid drone but during the night time it was almost impossible. However we saw the Shahid drone then it was in the light. But from what I can see the Pskov air defense is not using the lights to find out the drones in the sky. Basically they fire at will, that's it. About the drones that were used to attack the Pskov airfield, we are still in lack of the information about those. Could be beavers, but also those could be the small drones that were launched from the Russian territory. The drones like this one, for example, here we have the unknown flying object. It was shadowed on this video, edited, just not to show the drone construction, but we may see the result of the drone strike. So here we go. It kaboomed over the target working like the cluster munition. As you can see the small shrapnel hit the ground and pretty much further away from the target as well. So it is not a very precise weaponry that may target just particular vehicle or something. No, it has the vast area of penetration which increases the chance to hit the target. Let's look from the close perspective. Well. Indeed, this drone acts like the cluster shell which is flying and controllable. It's the first time I see drone is acting like that. Now from above, the video from the other drone, and this one is flying, exploding and hit the target. Here we can see the remains of the shrapnel, of that box, the penetration of the steel, of the wood, of different surfaces, and I would say that it is very, very effective. If this tiny little shrapnel goes inside the plane skin, the airplane will not fly for a very long time. Aircraft are very sensitive equipment that should be checked and cross-checked, so special repairs should be done on that one. According to the New York Times, Ukraine is developing up to six models of the long-range drones, which may cover 1000 kilometers. It's even further than the Moscow from Kiev. We are witnessing the new stage in the military warfare development, so the future wars will be conducted with the drones. As you saw many times, not so expensive drones may cause devastation to very, very expensive tools that Russia uses. And also, unfortunately, Russia uses the drones against the Ukrainian equipment. For example, Lancer drones are very effective. This video was filmed today in Berdansk, Russia.
As you can see, there is the drone, it's the airplane type of the drone, so those are not the beavers, which the Ukrainian side used massively before, so we have lots of the drones in the fleet of Ukrainian army. One of the drones is like that, so twin engine, with some of the mines that could be loaded on board, and then the drone flies somewhere, dropping the goods on the enemy side, and then returning back using the parachute. I believe that Ukrainian army is testing multiple types of those drones and sooner or later there will be not such many variety of the drones, but couple of the types per particular purpose. The Wall Street Journal says that after Ukraine broke through the main Russian defense line of Surovikin, not far away from Robotne, there is the chance for Ukrainian army to break through the rest of the Russian defense lines and reach the Azov Sea. But it is not going to be a very fast maneuver. According to the information coming from Crimean publics, there are some of the kabooms in Feodosia and Balaklava, which is not far away from Sevastopol. But videos and photos have not been published. More news about two of the Ukrainian helicopters that crashed not far away from Kramatorsk. As for the helicopters quite far away from the front lines, our official military says that those were flying away from Suhoi Su-35, the Russian fighter jet, and because of that they crashed. It wasn't the attack from that fighter jet, but it seems for me that it was the collision of two helicopters. Sometimes it might happen. Unfortunately, it's been confirmed that six crew members lost their lives. The European Union countries promised to deliver around around 1 million artillery shells to Ukraine. For now, they delivered around 250,000 shells, which is 25% or the quarter from all of the promised shells, which is very low, because just three months left till the end of this year. Meanwhile, Russia wants to get more shells and other military equipment from the North Korea. Just two months ago, the Russian Defense Minister Shoigu visited Pyongyang, where they negotiated the deal, but North Korea still refused to supply the weaponry, even though it was reported that last year they delivered some of the military goods to Russia, but not the artillery shells. This time this deal could be agreed, but in that case North Korea will face new sanctions. The United States of America sending 50 more F-35 jets to European countries. Potentially those stealth fighters may carry nuclear bombs or rockets. I think this is the response for Russia, which put the nukes in Belarus. This is the Kherson direction. As you can see, Russia tried to hide their T-90 tank near to the old wreckage in this high grass. But finally it was identified and our FBA drones got rid of their Russian best tank. The full video I will publish on my Telegram channel. As for the latest updates from the front lines, everything is more or less as before. I wonder why the Institute of the War Researchers publishes this situation, because for sure our guys reached the Verbova village, so it should be something like that. The Russian main defense line was penetrated in this way. As for the deep state military map, I don't see the further movement of Ukrainian army, but we are here very close to Verbova. As for the deep state military map, I don't see the movement for today towards Novoprokopivka or Verbova, but those are two main vectors of Ukrainian counterattack. Hopefully our guys gonna move very soon. We have just the update that Russian forces had to retreat from this area. Let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today. Russia is moving their forces out. If we check out the Russian maps, they confirm that there is the fighting near to Robotina towards Nova Prokopivka. They also mark the liberated territory by Ukrainian side. Basically, after Nova Prokopivka, there is also Slatka Balka, and after it, the freeway towards Tokmak. This is the Ukrainian artillery system M109L provided by Italy. As you can see, this is the anti-drone net, mostly used to protect the vehicles against the Russian Lancer drone attacks. But in this case, it may also block the way out for the crew 
to evacuate from this self-propelled artillery system. I hope that there is some area on the bottom which is used for evacuation. My friends, as usual, if you want to know more, please subscribe for my Telegram channel. That's it for the main news for today. Don't forget to press the like to this video and also you may support my channel by following some of the links in the video description just below. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.